Hello and welcome back to the Speak Truly podcast. I'm your host, Kai, here with Mitch and Ryan. And today we're talking about Flat Earth. Yeah, today we have a, um, we're very excited to have another guest on the podcast. And this time it's actually not someone from our immediate friend group. So we're also really excited about that. Um, today we have uh, David Weiss from the Flat Earth podcast joining us. So give it up for David. Thank you for, for agreeing yeah. to come on. Thank you, yeah. David. Thanks for um, having yeah, to me. Give a little, yeah, yeah. To give a little background before we let Dave kind of introduce himself, um, we run a social media Instagram page um, called Speak Truly. And someone from the Flat Earth podcast reached out to us and asked if we wanted to have Dave on. Um, and me personally, I've never really given too much thought about the shape of the earth, the size, dimensions, that kind of stuff. Um, so I was like, what the heck, let's do this thing. Um, so Dave, if you wanted to give a little bit of a background on who you are, um, kind of what you believe in, and then maybe just a little summary of what Flat Earth is all about, that'd be awesome. Yeah, the, the thing is, nobody really thinks about the earth. We've been brought up in a way where we're just told stuff about it, never shown any proof, and then we just believe. And uh, because everyone else believes it, we all believe it. I mean, people do things because other people do them and believe them. So who am I? I'm just a guy. I worked in corporate America. I started my own company after I left corporate America. I was doing a podcast on conspiracies, discovered the deception, the globe deception, the biggest conspiracy of all. And here I am now talking to you know dozens of shows a week, trying to help the world see and figure out who they are and, uh, and take back our freedoms. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think one of the, one of the biggest questions that we have just kind of get the ball rolling is why do you think the earth is flat? Just like a general, I know there's, there's a lot, a lot of evidence from what I've seen from you on your shows. I've listened to a little bit of some podcasts you've been on and even uh, some into the rabbit hole, uh, some videos on that. So, um, what do you think, why do you think the earth is flat? I guess just beginning with because I looked, because every sense I have okay. says it's flat and stationary. Every scientific measurement I do shows that it's flat and stationary. Large bodies of water at rest lay flat on a ball 24,901 miles around like they tell us it is. There is a curvature formula. And when you apply that formula, it doesn't work at all. We can see things that should be hundreds, if not thousands of feet below the curvature. Now with uh, new... Uh, telephoto um, infrared cameras, we could see even farther. We should, we're seeing things that should be miles below a hidden curve. Sonar on, on submarines down near the bottom of the ocean can see another submarine 100 miles away. Well, there should be a mountain over 6,000 feet tall in between them, blocking them, but there's not. The, um, mm. on, on the top of the water, a, uh, a, a Navy ship can pinpoint another late Navy ship with a pencil thin laser beam at over 100 miles, there should be a 6,600 foot hump of water in between them, but there's not. Mm. Airplanes fly straight and level over an earth plane. No test for axial rotation or motion has ever been successful. They actually prove the opposite. Every star in the sky resets every year to the exact same space it was the year before, the decade before, the century before. Nothing is moving. So the question I have is, can you give me one reason that you think you live on a globe? And I'll give you a Bitcoin if you can come mm -hmm. up with one. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. <laughs> just one. I just gave you a whole bunch and I didn't even start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I I'm coming into this more because like you said, um, just right at the beginning, uh, especially after our first phone call to um, what you had said just about what we grow up believing these things and don't really do our own research. And that's why, that's why I was honestly most excited to have you on because um, I haven't done that much research on it, to be honest. And when, when confronted with the task of um, kind of giving evidence to around earth, I, I struggle with that. And even with flat earth too. So I'm kind of on the fence here, to be honest so, with you. I'm trying yeah, yeah. to go. So, yeah. so here's the thing. There, there's a couple of different types of people in the world, people that never looked and will never look. And uh, they're Globers for forever. There's people that never looked and like, all right, I'm, now I'm interested. Now I'm going to look, but they they look half half astly, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they and the, their their idea of research is, let me Google, is the Earth flat? All right, and uh, yeah. you know, or, or photos <laughs> of yeah. flat Earth, and Google will deliver you pictures of a disc floating in space. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, which make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Uh, you know, while, while I'm talking to you guys, I'm showing some pictures that you guys are doing an audio podcast. Mm-hmm. If you set your view at the top to um, speaker view, you'll be able to see my images better if you're having difficulty seeing them. I see. Um, okay. So, um, that, so th- that's one thing. And the other thing is, as you said, you never really searched into it. I'm going to ask you guys some questions. Mm-hmm. I got them all wrong when I was asked. So don't feel bad. You know, if you okay. get them all wrong, how fast is the Earth spinning in the heliocentric globe model? Um, hmm. I'm going to give you the answer: a thousand, a thousand miles an hour at the equator. A thousand hmm. miles an hour. The speed of sound is like 700 miles an hour. So you're spinning faster mm-hmm. than the speed of sound if you're sitting still on the equator. That makes no sense. You're also mm-hmm. orbiting the sun at 66,600 miles an hour, you're chasing the sun at a half a million miles an hour and you're moving sideways at one or 2 million miles per hour. But when you go outside and look around, what do you see? You see nothing's moving, right? Mm You're, you, you feel that you're stationary. We, you know, they, the science, 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 not science, science is a word. Science is a real thing. Flat earthers love science. We use science. Scientism Mm -hmm. um, says that, the earth is spinning. I used to think this was the coolest thing um, that the, so fast that the world that at the equator, the water bulges 14 miles high. I thought that was well, yeah, it makes sense. You know, the centrifugal force. How come the central mm-hmm. Africa isn't underwater? There should be if it's bulging 14 miles high, there should be a ring of water going right around the equator. But there's lots of land on the equator. The Maldives right on the equator are only like a foot or two above the, the ocean. There's no tides there. You know, the tides are less than a foot. We have lakes that are perfect glass, mirrors of the sky. They're not moving. Mm -hmm. Like if you tapped your foot on the edge of the land there, it would send a ripple across the lake, right? Any, any motion whatsoever, you would see, you know, it, you would see it on a body of water, but, Mm -hmm. but there's the lakes are perfectly still, you know, when there's no wind. Um, Yeah. So that makes no sense whatsoever. So, Mm-hmm. What is the flat earth if it's not a disc floating in space? You know, that's what they tell you in the flat earth society. If you Google, you go to, you'll end up at the flat earth society. That's not what, that's a government controlled disinformation site. Why are they promoting disinformation? Because they want you to laugh at flat earth. It's called gatekeeping, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So what is the flat earth? Um, the flat earth is like a pond. Think about what a pond is. A pond is where water accumulates um, in the low spot in the land. And then the edge of the pond is just where the water is higher than the land surface. Well, we live in all of the oceans of the world form a giant pond. All of the continents are the islands. They're surrounded by water, but all of the water is surrounded by the highest land on earth. Did they teach you that Antarctica is the highest land on earth? No. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. It is the shoreline of the world pond. What is beyond? Antarctica, we don't know. It's off limits to everybody. In 1959, they came up when all the other country, every country was killing each other. They came up with uh, the Antarctic Treaty and every country signed on says nobody, no corporation, no person, nobody for any reason whatsoever can explore Antarctica, period, until the year 2041. And Mm -hmm. we must protect the wildlife there, which is just penguins. And so much that we can't fly an airplane over it because the sound of the airplane might disturb the penguins' migrational patterns. And then we would lose the penguins forever. That's this, this is before environmentalism was even a word, but go ahead, deforest the Amazon, kill, you know, start endless wars, that's fine. You know, and so Antarctica is off limits. Why is Antarctica off limits? Because what's out there? Maybe there's extra territory out there, more land, extra terra, right? in the outer space beyond Antarctica, that would be extraterrestrials Mm. would come from there across the earth plane. Haven't there, Uh, um, oh, sorry, go ahead, Ryan. No, that was, I liked that picture you had, David. I hadn't seen that before where it's just, where it just happened to be kind of the smallest ring. uh, We're we're in the center, we're in in middle earth, if you will, middle earth. But so I guess uh, besides that government treaty, go, just like, do you think there's like a bigger power at work keeping people from like, if you're just a billionaire playboy who has a yacht and is able to just go down there, that like, is there some type of p- police force or government or some entity that would actually stop you and stop this kind of from being explored? Yeah, and you, you know, the, the, about? 
Yeah. So the Antarctic Treaty, you know, they don't have people, you know, with their elbows linked going all the way around Antarctica saying, no, you can't come sure. in. But they, they can see, you know, we have radar, we have, we have saddleloons, we don't have satellites, we have saddleloons. And uh, one, uh, I forget the guy's name, Shack not Shackleton. Um, the guy got a per permit from his country to go down to Antarctica. Before he got to the shoreline of Antarctica, he was stopped by two Navy warships. They threatened to sink him if he didn't turn around. He went back home and he was arrested and jailed. So yeah, they're serious mm -hmm. about not letting you in. All right. Yeah, and, that sounds, uh, yeah. What is a satelloon? A satelloon is what, you know, we're told that there's satellites, which are mm -hmm. um, satellites, which are orbiting the earth uh, you know, falling around the earth. So I showed you, I, I explained the the patterns of, I mean, the motion of the earth. It's twirling, whirling and spinning and rocketing in four different directions. But somehow these satellites know how to fall around the earth just perfectly. And they always remain exactly where they're supposed to be. And a geostationary satellite can stay above the same point on the land. And it knows how fast the earth is spinning and rocketing and moving sideways and curving, but somehow it stays in the perfect spot. No, none of that makes any sense. That is pseudoscience made up by Arthur C. Clarke to program our minds. Um, so a satelloon is just what you think it is. NASA owns all of the big helium companies in the world and they're the largest consumer of helium in the world. They've created what they call the helium shortage because they don't want people having access to large amounts of helium, right? So they get these satellites, these, and they launch them on balloons that float over the flat earth. There's tens of thousands of these things up there at any mm. time. We've interviewed ex Navy people or our Air Force people that were on the on the balloon retrieval system where they retrieve these in the air, they resurface them, and then they put them up again. They go up for more than a year at a time, each one, and they launch them from Antarctica. They can control them remotely to keep them over whatever area they want using the wind currents at different levels. There's counter-rotating wind currents above the flat Earth at different altitudes. Are we able to see the satellites? Is that something that we'd be able to like look at from that's our perspective? Good, that's a good question. Uh, we, mm -hmm. we've, some people have filmed them transiting the moon, um, but those lights that we see in the sky that we're told are satellites, um, mm -hmm. they, those very well could be the balloons because those balloons are the size of football fields, right? But a satellite oh. like you're looking at right here is smaller than a Volkswagen bug, I would say, right? That, that would be a big satellite, you know, the size of a small car. And the satellites are higher than the International Space Station. Think about this, a 747, biggest plane, one of the biggest planes we have. At cruising altitude, it's a tiny dot in the sky that you can barely see, right? At cruising altitude, yeah. right? Yeah. That's due to perspective. It's feet. Far, yeah, it's, been, it's at 5,000, no, no, 30,000 feet, five miles, okay? So, it's a, it's a tiny dot at that height. If you doubled the height, you couldn't see it. The angular size would be too small for you to see at double the height. The International Space Station, which is about the same size as the 747, supposedly, is 50 times higher than that. 50 mm -hmm. times higher. That would be impossible I to see. see. Satellites are smaller and even higher. There's no way mm -hmm. you can see them, even if they were lit up with LED lights. But they're not. They're not lit up. Sure. Uh, so, so you think the the International Space Station is up there? Like, there's an actual object that's up in the Ab sky? Absolutely not. The International mm -hmm. Space Station. Um, now, here's the thing. What are we seeing? I have the tracker, and I've seen it. I've seen the light come by. You know, and I highly recommend that everyone that you guys get, you know, that you can get an International Space Station tracker on your phone and tell it to alert you when you'll be able to see it crossing over. And I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, I've, I've actually done that before. I've yeah. seen it twice. So what, is it, what does it look like? It looks like the, a piece of the sun, basically. It looks as bright as the sun. It's like the brightest star. And it goes from horizon to horizon in just a couple of minutes. I mean, incredibly fast if it's at the height that they're telling us. And... If you, you know, if you if you look at the Interna International Space Station, uh, when they do those spacewalks, it's not very bright. How come, you know, how come it's reflecting back to Earth that bright? And how can it move that fast? And the other thing is, how could we see it? Its angular size is too, too small. There's no way we could see it at 50 times the height of a 747 cruising at altitude. So what is it? 
It's a luminary. We don't know what it is. It's, it's more in the form of a wandering star. The wandering stars are now called planets, but it's a light that orbits, that circles around over the flat earth, just like all of the other lights do. Don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Can't go up there, can only speculate. I guess okay. one, one of the things that's interesting to me with the satellites and, and all that kind of stuff is, I guess, and this maybe is just a good segue for you to kind of address the topic, is just gravity itself kind of being the reason as to why you had mentioned like they fall in the, the exact right pattern even though we're rocketing through space at these insane speeds and at least to me how it's been explained is gravity is this force that's able to kind of keep these orbits and keep these different bodies rotating around the earth and i guess kind of how would you how do you kind of tackle that situation so did they did they teach you about um about planetary gravity and moon gravity I, I know uh, very little. Yeah, well, not well, very much. Here's the thing. They didn't teach you about that. Well, I, in the way I'm going to explain it, because I'm uh -huh. making it up, right? So I'm going to do exactly what they do. So okay. in the heliocentric system, the Earth is falling around the sun because the sun's gravity, which is massive, is holding onto the Earth. And the Earth is just falling around the sun. And it's, it's just doing this elliptical orbit around the sun. And it, and it does it for millions and millions and millions of years. And it always stays perfectly like a clock. Right. Mm -hmm. But the, the earth is the earth holds on to the moon and the moon's falling around the earth, even though the earth is going spiraling around the sun, the, the moon orbits around the earth and the sun doesn't like the moon because the sun only holds on to planets. The planets only hold on to moons. OK. There must be sun sure. gravity and moon gravity. Right. So what happens when the moon gets right in between the sun and the, and the earth? How come the sun's gravity doesn't rip it away or at least perturb its orbit a little bit, right? You think it would, logic would say. It's right in line. I mean, the sun's not only really holding onto the earth, it's holding on to, to uh, Mercury and Venus and Mars and Saturn and, Plu and Jupiter and Pluto and Neptune. It's holding on to all of them, but it ignores mm -hmm. the moon? Why would it ignore the moon? So here's the problem. So, yeah. Good, good. I, I, want oh, to I was going to ask you yeah, just a question. So um, the moon doesn't, so I actually don't know about this. The moon doesn't move at all when it's in between the, the sun and the, the earth no, from it, what you've seen. It does. The moon, no it, the moon is circles around the earth every 28 yeah. days. That's what they tell us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it's always moving, but when it passes in between the sun and the earth, how come the gravity of the sun, how come when it's coming around the earth towards the sun, it doesn't speed up. And then when it goes away from the sun, the, the sun doesn't slow it down by tugging on it, mm -hmm. right? None of this okay, makes any sense. Here, here's the thing. They, they, they make up all these theories, but then they can't model any of them. If you take a, the world's best supercomputer, you put a ball in it, say, all right, here's a sun, here's an earth, put them in orbit, it works perfectly. You say, this one's got this much gravity, this one's got this. They could, they could, it works like a perfect timepiece and they could predict where it's gonna be forever. Add one more body, a moon or another planet into that system, the entire system falls apart, never repeats itself and they can never predict what's gonna happen next. The world's best supercomputer can't keep track of three bodies with gravity because gravity doesn't work like that. It's made up nonsense. Well, that actually, um, I, I was listening to one of your guest appearances on some podcast where you're talking, but you just mentioned the three body problem. Yeah. Um, and I, I started to do some research on it because I thought it was really interesting and I had never thought about it. And what I found, I think, is that the, the three body problem, it seems like it's not, that it does it can't exist it's that there's no analytical closed form solution to determine the position of these bodies at any given point in time um which i'm actually i majored in in mathematics at uh at unr which is the, the college and here in reno um but i mean i mean i'm not like super super good at math i don't have like so here's the thing math is a very useful tool for describing mm -hmm. anything you want you can have mm -hmm. math describe, you know, if you had five apples and you, and I mm -hmm. took seven of them from you, would you have negative two apples? No, yeah, not literally. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm saying math doesn't, math can describe reality. It can also describe non-reality. For mm -hmm. example, are you guys, do you guys familiar with Aristophanes and the Greek philosopher, the Greek mathematician that um, discovered the, stick with guy. The, the sticks and shadows guy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, so Aristophanes, 
He's here in Saeed, and uh, the sun is directly above him. He's got a stick, and there's no shadow. And his buddy, 500 miles away, they had a long string and a cup, I believe. They were talking to each other. And um, <laughs> that before your time, you guys know about the string and cup. Yeah, oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, no, so, yeah, yeah. So he had a stick straight up, and you know, and Carl Sagan had taught us, you know, on Cosmos, which is before your time, but uh, he 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 um, brainwashed everybody, saying, you know, he's got the two sticks, and he goes. It wouldn't work unless they were, you know, and he bends the cardboard and it's like, unless they were on a ball, then this one, you know, one would have no shadow. Well, that's assuming sun rays are coming in parallel, right? Assuming sun rays are coming in parallel. So, you know, and why would anyone assume sun rays are coming in parallel when no one's ever seen sun rays come in parallel? But let's just go with it. So you can do a perfectly good, you know, trigonometry and figure out the sphericity of the earth. And, and they, and Carl says that uh, he got it within 2% of the actual size, you know? So this is the most famous mm -hmm. mathematician from ancient Greece that figured out the size of the earth. And he was never mentioned in any books until the late 1900s. Mm. Mm. Okay. So he was, he was put there after the fact is right. what you're, here's yeah. the problem. I don't believe that he ever did it, but even if he did it, it doesn't matter because on a flat earth, with a small local sun, he could be on this flat plane. His stick would have no shadow. His buddy's stick would have the same angles. You could do the same math and you could describe this flat level plane as a sphere, All right? Same exact equation, yeah. same exact angles. But so you, you're you making assumptions with, with, the, with the stuff. It's just like the distance to the sun. It was made up on an assumption that Venus is the same size as earth. I say Venus is the size of a basketball. The the thing you see in the sky is the size of a basketball. I'm not saying I'm saying they say it's the size of Earth. I say it's the size of a basketball. You can't prove either one of us right or wrong. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, yes. I see. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. It, it's when you look up at at the uh, you know in this. And by the way, looking up at the sky is really no way to prove um, anything because the optics of the sky, especially if there's a glass dome, especially if space is water. Like I like we believe it is, and there's lots of evidence showing it. Um, it changes the way you see things when you look through water. Things change directions, things change size. Um, you know, it's not. You don't look up at the ceiling at the lights in your ceiling to the to figure out the shape of your floor. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so you think that there's, um, Space not water. just a vacuum up there. There's there's water up there. If there was a vacuum, why doesn't it suck all of the air off Earth? Well, off Earth, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read your mind. Gravity. Gravity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, get a straw, point it downwards, and with the weak vacuum or low pressure of your mouth and lungs, see if you can suck air or water up and away from Earth. Could you do it? Of course you can. Easily, no effort. How does a vacuum of space not suck air off of water? You can go up to ten thousand feet, a hundred thousand feet. Point your straw down, suck, and air and water will come up effortlessly, right? You're you're not even nearly anything to compare how strong the vacuum of space is. Vacuum of space should suck all of the air right off the Earth, but it doesn't mm -hmm. because space is not a vacuum. Um, and we have, a, I believe we have a dome over us. Can't prove it, but it sure seems that way. And how high up is this dome? Great question. So if you look at all the NASA rockets, SpaceX rockets, they go, they shoot up, they go up uh, 73 miles. No, they go, they go up, they curve out over the ocean, and then they, they disappear. And we're watching a cartoon inside of a minute, if not from the first minute. And um, they, uh, they don't go anywhere. But in, Ar in, in uh, Arizona, these guys shot up this uh, rocket called the Go Fast rocket, and they gave us an uninterrupted view, unlike NASA. If you watch their launches, there's seven cuts within the first 15 seconds. Okay, it's just like a movie because it is. Um, but this thing went up and up and up at 73 miles. It went kerplunk. It went into something. It sounded like water, um, but maybe it was like plasma. You know, maybe it wasn't as thick as water, but maybe it was frozen air because the temperature was near absolute zero. And mm -hmm. And then it started floating weird. And here's the funny thing. It all of a sudden we saw the moon and the moon went by. It was a little dot in the sky, but it was the moon. Earth was looking pretty flat too, but the moon, <laughs> was over, the moon was over New Zealand at that time. Right. That's on the other side of the earth. Oh, from Arizona. Wow. From Arizona. 
Yeah, so if the Earth is a basketball, they were like a millimeter or less over that basketball. And New Zealand's on the other side of that basketball. How did they see the moon? Yeah, that's interesting. Do you have a do you have a link to that video? It's just um, but we might want to just post that out for the podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I will. I'll try to find it. Um, I, I I know it's on the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, my app, um, which mm-hmm. I'll tell people mm-hmm. about. But that you know, if you if you Google Flat Earth, you end up with the Flat Earth Society. You end up with you know, by man Dan, yeah. their 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 hit piece guy who just does gaslighting. You know, ridiculous snarky videos about us. He'll never talk to us live because because he can never answer anything that we have. Um, he just, you know, makes up stu- stuff, you know, gaslights and, uh, and um, mm. straw man, uh, straw man arguments us. But yeah, the, the app bypasses all of that. It gives you a daily video every day. Um, it shows you, have you, are you guys familiar with my app? Yeah, I downloaded your app before this just to check it out a little bit. Uh, and I did, I, I watched some of those videos and they're definitely, they're definitely interesting. I guess one more for our viewers, maybe because I, I have the app and I've kind of seen how it worked, but uh, with the sun and the moon, how those work together, sunsets, I know are kind of another big topic of kind yeah. of trying to prove, you know, as, as proof that the earth is a sphere um maybe if you want to address that some and kind of explain how that works on the flat earth model yeah so so the sun circles around the flat earth but you know depending on atmospheric conditions the way we see the sun the sun is not a physical object that we see i believe that the true source of the sun um is outside of the dome and it's we're just seeing a focus point in but there are certain sunsets and certain conditions that you see that are just clearly going away from you and circling around over the earth they're not going down. They're just going down due to perspective. Um, and so in the app, there's where does the sun go videos. There's tons of tons of videos showing you sunsets, then showing you experiments that we'd made models and show you how the sun appears to be going down, but it's actually straight and level. So like if there was a, a cloud deck, you know, we have spotty clouds, you know how they all sit kind of on a deck above you. Cloud directly above mm-hmm. you, you're looking up at that cloud, you know, it's five, 10,000 feet in the air. And then you're looking out over the water and 25 miles away, those clouds look like they're touching the water just due to perspective, right? They look mm. like they're touching mm-hmm. the water, but they're really 25,000, five or 10,000 feet in the sky, same height. So if I drew a line from my eyeball to that cloud 25 miles away over the water, I'm going to see that line parallel with the water all the way to the cloud. That's how I would see it, Right. But if you were standing under that cloud and you can see the line that goes from that cloud to my eye, you'd see a line from 10,000 feet up in the sky that's sloping down to my eye. Right. Mm-hmm. So, right. So here, so I'm holding my arm up at a, at a 45 degree angle. Right. So the clouds really up here, but I see it down here on the horizon. Okay. So mm-hmm. it's up. So it, it's up there. Hold on. So that I got the clouds up there. And as the sun goes away, it just goes and eclipses behind that those clouds. But the way my eye sees it is it just goes down due to perspective and it sets. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so yeah. So the sun is just disappearing behind clouds. Is that what you're saying? Well, it, it, I call it the atmospheric deck of opacity because even on a non-cloudy day, when you're looking across, you know, um, let's say you're just standing at the edge of the water and you're looking across, even on a clear day, that atmosphere becomes thicker and thicker and thicker. It accumulates. It's like looking across a pool underwater, a hundred yard pool. You can't see the wall on the other side, right? Even the water, mm-hmm. the, the water's clear. The same thing with the air. So I'm standing there, I'm six feet above the water. I'm looking and let's say it's, 50 miles, the air becomes opaque, 100 miles, whatever it is, 50, you know, let's say it's 50 miles. If I went up 50 feet, I could probably see 110 miles. And I went up another 50 feet, I could probably see up 120 miles, right? The higher I go, the thinner, the clearer the air is. So that's a atmospheric ramp of opacity. And when the sun mm. just goes, it goes behind that deck of opacity. But due to perspective, we see it going down. So, so if you could get up, if in that same situation, if you could also go straight up through this layer of opacity to higher up where you can see further, would you, it, in theory, be able to see the sun for longer, or I guess completely? Right there. 
Oh, you're, yes. you're small. You, there you, you are. Can, yeah, yeah, you can see the sun. You can see the sun. It just, when we send balloons up to 120,000 feet, the sun always looks like it's almost at the same height, maybe just a little higher. So again, the sun, we all see relative to our own position. It's kind of being, it's like a reflection in a mirror. Imagine two of us, we're standing outside 100 yards apart, and we're looking at a giant mirror, upright mirror, and the sun was setting behind us, okay? So the third person walks up to the mirror, and I say, see the sun right there? And they draw a circle around the sun with a Sharpie, right? Then they walk mm -hmm. over to you, one of you, and say, where do you see the sun? They're going to draw a circle on that mirror 100 yards apart from mine, my circle. But we're both talking about the same sun, but we see it in a different position because it's really a reflection. So how can a reflection actually, you know, the sun's hot, like how do, how would a reflection be hot? So th this is when I came to that. I'd always thought about that. And I'm like, well, maybe it could be. And I, I didn't have, I didn't really think about how to prove it, but I was at a conference in Las Vegas. I'm sitting by the pool, 3.30 in the afternoon. Sun's going down on the right side of me and it was blasting on my face. It was like really intense. I'm like, I'm gonna to be toast on the right side of my face and the left side's not gonna to be toast. I thought about going to the other side of the pool, but all of a sudden the sun lined up with the, ho the hotel was all mirrored and it lined up with one of the mirrors perfectly and the hotel is like hundred yards away. And I could see both suns and they look the same, of course, it's a mirror. But then I closed my eyes and the reflected sun hitting the left side of my face, I said, if I didn't know which one was the real sun, could I tell? And I couldn't tell. Mm. There was mm. both equally as hot and one was a reflection. Maybe the other one is a reflection also. Mm. So uh, maybe a, I'm wait, a little here, confused. Here's one, with, one, uh... one more thing to ponder about the way we see light and the sun and, uh, and everything. Did you know, uh, like on a on the middle of the a sunny day, if you look up, can you see stars? No. Not normally. No. no. Did you know that if you drop down into a deep well and looked up, you could see stars? Mm, really? Because the sunlight's out of the way. Well, it's weird. It's just the way our minds propagate light in this system. This world is nothing like we think it is. Flat Earthers do not know what this world is, but mm. we know a lot more than Globers do. We know that we're not on a spinning ball flying through an infinite space, you know, in a space vacuum, big bang, everything exploded, nothing exploded, everything exploded, whatever. Then all of the rocky bits turned into spinning balls and all of the gases turned into bigger balls and left a vacuum in between. How do you have a gas ball in a vacuum? Well, yeah, gravity. I guess again, it'd just be gr the gravity answer. Yeah, gravity. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. maybe I just I just want to clarify one thing for myself Gravity. on the app. You cool story, you bro. have the <laughs> 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 he has the cool meme shades on. Um, <laughs> uh, so on your app, I, do you think there's the suns being reflected around, or do you think with the mirror kind of thing that you were talking about, or is there one kind of body outside this dome that is moving around? I guess that's the part that I'm a little lost. On. Yeah, I, I again, anything above our heads is is uh, speculation. So the way I the way I see it is above the dome, there is a source. What is that source? I don't know. Is it God? I don't know. Don't know what it is, and it's projecting into our system. Um, and a simple experiment you can do is you can get a uh, a, a glass dome. You know, they make little paperweight glass domes. And you put it down on the ground and you hold a pen light above it. And then you just move the light across and inside the dome, you'll see like this sun rise. It's like, it doesn't photograph well, but there's like a little ball sun in the dome. And then it goes mm -hmm. away and it goes all, right down to the edge and, it, and then it stops and then it just fades out. And that's kind of exactly what we see. Um, when, I, when I told you, I put my drone up on a super clear dry day. And uh, for in five minutes time, the sun went from pretty high up. It went down, 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 down. Now if the earth was spinning, it would just keep on going, but it didn't. It went down, 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 down. And then it stopped right above what appeared to be a horizon. And it sat there for 10 minutes. And then I super sped this video up, I'm, I'm showing you. And instead of going down, the sun just faded into the atmospheric deck of opacity. It just faded away. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, uh, so that's what you're talking about, where it's just it gets far enough away where it just kind of light. It's light out. can't yeah, it's light can't push. So people say, you know, how come I can't see Mount Everest? You know, if the Earth is flat, I should be able to see. Well, there's a lot of reasons you can't see. One is because nothing's big enough for where its angular size wouldn't get too small. But there's a spot in Alusia, France, a viewing spot where uh, where they look out over the ocean. And it's a famous spot because Mount Kanagu is 175 miles away. But at 175 miles away, um, oh, two days a year, you can see Mount Kanagu. But Mount Kanagu is 175 miles away. From that viewing height, using globe curvature math, uh, the top of that mountain should be a mile below the horizon. But on two days a year, the sun, in between its migration between the tropics, lines up and then you can see it backlights the mountains and you can see it. And the very top of that mountain should be a mile below the curvature, but it's not, you can see it, it's there. It's not refraction, it's not gravity, okay? It's there, <laughs> we can see too far. Mm -hmm. um, one question I have is, I know you, you just had the picture of the, um, like the, the flat earth with the sun and the moon going yeah. around in a circle. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, just one question I have is, what about eclipses? How do eclipses work in this in this sort of system? Which, solar eclipses um, or lunar eclipses? Uh, let's start with solar eclipses. So, a solar eclipse is when the sun and the moon. Um, it's when the Earth. A solar eclipse is when the moon is in between the sun and the Earth and it blocks out the yep. sun, okay? Mm -hmm. So they have to be lined up perfectly to for an eclipse to, to work. But there's a thing mm -hmm. called the Seleninian, I always pronounce it wrong, don't shoot me, people, um, <laughs> where the observer who's, you know, you're the observer, you're always on the top of the ball, you see mm -hmm. sees the sun and the moon both up in the sky above the horizons and the eclipse starts before one of them goes below. That's impossible, right? And the other problem is the eclipse comes in from the top sometimes. If the earth was causing the eclipse, it should come in from the bottom, but it comes in from the top. I think this, I think what you're talking about right now is a lunar eclipse. That's a, you, no, no, that's a, sorry. That is a lunar eclipse. You're right. I'm dyslexic. Yeah. I have dyslexia. It's actually, <laughs> called, no, no, it's no, called no, listic. Oh, okay. Those are so confusing, bad. honestly. All right. But you yeah, said, well, yeah. we're going to do both anyway. So the, the, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the, the eclipse comes in from the top. What does this prove? What's causing the eclipse? I couldn't tell you. I have some theories, but I can tell you it's not the Earth because scientifically, provably, it's not the Earth. So, so you don't know what causes lunar eclipses. Nobody does. N nobody knows exactly. I mean, they think that there's another dark body, whatever. Um, you know, the way the moon turns red is 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 strange. But when you when you actually do a model with a ball casting a shadow on another ball it doesn't give you the same uh, thing that we actually see in the moon. The, the shadow comes in at a, as a, and as a, as a an ellipse spreads out and then leaves as an ellipse. Hmm. Uh, it, so oh, I see it doesn't yeah, quite make the same. It doesn't pattern. make the same pattern. So what's causing the lunar eclipse. It's, it's very, very hard to say, you know, I know this is an audio podcast, but I'm mm -hmm. going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys. A, 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 a solar eclipse video. So during a solar eclipse, um, there's very, there's um, no one's ever seen the moon approach the sun, eclipse the sun or exit the sun. Okay. Did you know that? Well, I've, I've actually seen the solar eclipse. You have, but and, you never saw the yeah. moon. You just saw the cutout of the sun. You see this black. No, I, I, I could I saw the moon moving. I mean, we, we were there the whole time. No, and... But you didn't see the moon moving. You saw the the dark the darkness of the sun, but you never <laughs> saw the features of the moon. Nobody, well, well, nobody I mean, I ever could, has. I, nobody ever has. I, I saw the I saw the moon when it was apart from the sun, go in into the sun. You didn't. You didn't. No one's ever seen that. I. Well, no, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you haven't, you have to go back and look at, think about what you saw. So no, no one's ever seen the sun from when it goes new to, um, so just like, that's like I'm showing you here. So I have the sun being projected into the, the sky 
And mm -hmm. let me just slow this down. It is normal. Normal. Um, and so you don't ever see it. That's because it's behind the dome and it's it's being projected into our system, right? So am I still am I playing the right video? So there was a um, hold on. Yeah, so so that's that's what you see. What you see is on the paper towel. That is our that is our sky screen. And you 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 you're imagining that you're seeing the moon, but that, that's not the video I actually wanted to show you. The second one is here. So there was an eclipse where it was where somebody filmed this weird little thing next to the moon. First, on the right is the eclipse I filmed. That's what you see when you have seen an eclipse. And on the left is the model eclipse that kind of look the same. But mm -hmm. you're imagining that that curve is the moon, but you can't see a moon. No one's ever seen the moon. So well, in, when I when I saw a solar eclipse, yeah, I mean we were there for days before it happened. We could see the moon and. And, and what we saw on the day when it happened, what, we could see the moon apart from the sun. There were just how many, how many, how, you saw the moon apart from the sun. How did you, how did yeah. you see the moon? Because it's a new moon when it happens. Well, but, I mean, I, I An eclipse I could only see happens when there's a new moon and nobody has ever seen the new moon in less than 42 hours after it goes new. You have to go go back and you're going to have to think about it. But during the eclipse, a lot of people think they see the moon. They're just seeing it. Let, let, but let me show you this. So right next, so the bright spot on, on the left is the sun. It's being eclipsed, but it, it, the sun is blowing out the lens. But right next to the sun, there's like this little eclipsed sun. Like, what is that? Now, there's another one. One of them is a lens flare, the one that's moving around. But one of them is locked to the sun's position. And uh, the sun, it was actually the same amount of eclipse as that, as that little, that little eclipse that's going on. You just can't tell because it's blown out. So, so what is that? And I, 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 I came up with the, you know, we, we'd have been looking into this. I'm like, what if it's the actual projector? So here is the, the, the eclipse video I showed you a little while ago where we're projecting the sun and we're eclipsing it with a new moon and it eclipses it. There's the source of the sun on the other side. So what I did is I made it, I made it um, a little, the sky a little more transparent. I'm like, maybe that paper towel was not, wasn't transparent enough. So here comes the eclipse again. And look, you see the little, the little eclipse I, I have right there. It's the same thing. That's the projector through the screen. Compare that to the actual eclipse. And it looks exactly the same. So mm, sure. is that what's causing a solar eclipse? I don't know. Maybe. Well, I guess what, what is the body that's moving in front of the projector then that's yeah. causing the eclipse? Is that I, the moon? I, I, yeah, that, that would be the real moon. No idea what it is. You know, the, okay. moon, <laughs> yeah, the moon is, um, the moon, you know, some people say, some people think that it's in charge of, it has to do with the delivery and removal of souls and you know on the on on the plane i don't know all of that stuff yeah. is beyond maybe what any of us can understand sure so uh so that would be the real moon this one that's above the dome and potentially gets in the way of the projector but so then what's the one that we see that's going around? Is that an actual thing or is that another projected body? Like what is the moon that yeah, we kind so, of can so see? So just like the light, but the projector of the sun is being projected into our sky, the moon is a light and it's being projected into our sky too. So when there's a new moon, there's nothing being projected. When there's a half moon, there's a half moon being projected. When there's a full moon, there's a full moon being projected. And that's what we see in the sky. And again, the sun and the moon don't act like physical objects. Just like if we tried to triangulate those mirror reflections of the sun, the triangulation wouldn't work because we're both looking at two things in two different places. Mm. You know, and if you had a third person to that to triangulate it, you know, the third person should make the triangulation even better, but it makes it worse because it's not a physical object. But if three of us were outside looking at a tree and we tried to triangulate it, it would work perfectly and we could figure out exactly where that tree is. Um, you know, how far that tree is from us uh, by doing good math, but you can't do it if we're all, if we're all looking at three different trees. Um, I, I think I have a question. Um, 
just to kind of keep it moving. Um, I know I've listened to a few podcasts where we talk a little bit about NASA. How do you, what do you think about NASA? Is, is it, is it real? Is it something that we're actively trying to get into space? How, how, what are your thoughts on or, that? Or I think you had also talked about Elon Musk, Mitch. You know, oh yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. Cause I was, I was curious here. if, if NASA, um, if there is no space, if there's nothing outside the dome or whatever it is, there's no vacuum. Um, I know Elon Musk has his own company with Tesla. Is he being supported by the government in that respect where everything is kind of a deception or how do you feel about that? In my opinion, Elon Musk is MK ultra complete um, total puppet. Think about this. Mm. He's the CEO of the largest solar power company in the world. He's the CEO mm. of the largest electric car company of the world. He's the CEO of the largest tunneling company of the world. He's the CEO of the largest of the brain impl implant company in the world. He's the CEO of the company that took over NASA. Okay. This is an impossibility. None of this could have, you can't have anybody to do all of that. It's just impossible. The smartest person in the world could not do that. SpaceX is just NASA's way of taking um, it to the private sector so we can't do freedom of information requests to get their information. SpaceX admits that NASA has full access to everything they do. They're just another wing, the, the, another wing of the space program. The Japanese, the Indian, the Chinese, all of the space programs, they're all in it together. It's all just to deceive you, to make you think you live on a spinning ball. You know, they use different forms of fakery um, sometimes they launch miniature rockets. Sometimes they launch uh, lighter than air vehicles, helium blimps, like the space shuttle, the external tank was a blimp. And sometimes they use CGI like you guys are watching right now. And when they use CGI, lots of things happen. Lots of things go wrong. We've actually found the projectors. Like what are these light projectors on there using Google Earth? We found light projectors or, or in some of the, I, maybe it wasn't Google Earth. There was some video and we're like, what are these, what are they lighting up? And we zoomed in, we we're able to see the serial number. We looked it up and it was a holographic projection company. So they're projecting holograms into the sky, just like they projected Tupac onto the stage. Okay. <laughs> they're projecting <That's> holograms, <laughs> right? It, it, and, and then if I, if I showed you NASA faking the uh, like anti-gravity on the space station once, would that be enough to make you realize we didn't go to the moon? Just once. So you know, whenever they're on there, they're always flipping things around, flipping the microphone around, they're flipping their hats around. Yeah, pencils, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. in the background, this guy goes floating way by when these guys are flipping their hat and their stuff around, they're talking nonsense. We're doing science in science. They just say science. And this guy goes floating <laughs> by. So I zoomed in and you can see he's hanging from a harness on wires, right? You can see the you can see the whole thing. Okay. That's kind of yeah, that's weird. Yeah. And then <laughs> and they use what's called augmented reality, where they have either contact lenses or they're looking at a television screen and they're manipulating things in free space. They're not really there. So this guy um, that I'm showing you, he was flipping his hat around, and at one point he's supposed to hand it to, to his buddy, but he moves his hand. The guy thought he was passing it and he puts it away but he never grabbed the hat so so he moved watch when he moves his right hand he moves his right hand right now bam the guy thinks he's passing on the hat he takes it and he puts it away <laughs> oh okay. okay so so the the people in the videos do think they're in space but no the, no no, is... no 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 these guys are hanging from wires in a green screen room these these guys oh i see yeah the hat's not real the, no, the hat's not real, right? The the things yeah. floating in the air are not <laughs> real, right? Um. And then and then they always playing with kids. They're talking about kids, and uh, look, there's nothing here, and all of a sudden there's a stuffed animal there, and she gets it. That's not real. The things that she's floating around aren't real. This is the the balloon she's holding. The ball she's holding is real. It's filled with helium, okay? But the <laughs> the thing, and it's called it's called augmented reality. They can do that. You can use it in real time. They use it in movies. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks like a VR headset. I have one of those. Yeah. Like you can definitely do that type of stuff. Yeah, and and the and the green screen technology is way way beyond what you know what people think even <laughs> yeah, realize. The consumer level, right? Yeah, consumer mm -hmm. level stuff is beyond what 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 most can imagine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think I, we're I, kind of 
kind of running out of time a little bit here. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, I think Mitch, did you? Because uh, we usually <laughs> like to end with some would you rather's. Um, I yeah, ask go you. For it. We got a couple minutes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, Dave, for joining yeah, us. That was, no, like, that was really cool to see a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff just from outside of the whole Google search realm. That was that was great. Mm -hmm. um, let's see I guess, here. I guess maybe real quick, is there? Yeah. What's the best way to for people to try to get? this not fake government pushed flat earth satiety information like yeah. i mean absolutely probably going out and look making your own conclusions is best but is there a yeah, yeah. A don't believe anything that? i say the the you know you could spend 500 hours so if you had the fortitude to spend 500 hours you'd probably get three hours worth of good stuff right and that that's going to take you uh, you know weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to to do that's if you had the fortitude and you just didn't get discouraged from all the crap they've they've resorted mm -hmm. to the crap crap in the punch bowl technique where there's so much crap about flat earth online you can't find any of the fruit so i created the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app mm -hmm. it's available on google play and iphone you need google you need a, an android 8.0 operating system or higher or iphone 6 or better um and it will show you just take the daily app challenge watch one video a day every day for two weeks check out the frequently asked questions check out all the other resources on there the app's two dollars and ninety nine cents. Just remember, a beer at a bar or a coffee from Starbucks, you're gonna piss it or away. Speak in truly, or a truly, truly glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what you have for the rest of your life. Just if you're unsure about spending yeah. the three dollars on it, go just read the reviews. Read the reviews. Right. right? And uh, cool. and that's the best way. It's a flatter sun, moon, and zodiac clock app. So cool. cool. That, that's Thank how you. you. Find yeah. it. And you can find it at theflatearthpodcast.com if you're looking for a link. Because sometimes they hide it on on some Google. When you try to search for it, it's hard to find. It's by Blue okay. Water Bay. Make sure it's by Blue Water Bay. Okay. Yeah, right, maybe let's try to get one. Would you rather in there? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then I got. I'll, I'll give you guys quick. one too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Perfect. Yeah. So so mine is, um, and we can get through this pretty quick here. But um, would you rather know every conspiracy there is on Earth? So whether it be conspiracy theories, so whether it be like Denver Airport type of stuff, whether it be round versus flat Earth, that kind of thing but not be able to tell anyone or would you rather pick one theory that everyone believes whether or not it's true? And I mean, if you want to think about it, Dave, I can go ahead and start. I think that, um, I think the first one being able to know every conspiracy theory, but not be able to no, tell so anyone. Know the, know the truth behind every conspiracy Yeah. So theory. the truth behind every conspiracy know, theory. Know yeah. all of the truth. Yeah, and not be able to tell anybody. And not be able to tell anybody. You have to keep it to yourself. Or yeah, just so know I think for one, one truth and be able to tell people. Yeah. So is, is the, kill yourself yeah, an option? Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's um, I, would say, I would say no, but I think that for <laughs> me personally, the first one would drive me insane. So I think I'd have to go with the no one. But I don't know what you guys think. I think I'd go with the no, no all of them. It's oh. just, the, just to have, I, have the knowledge. It, it'd be so I, interesting. I, 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 I think you'd go them. crazy. I go really. Oh man! So well, interesting. You know, my, you know, my question is isn't that much different. My question. You ready? Did everybody okay. answer? Yeah, Are we yeah, good? Let's get into it. Yeah. Is, yeah. Would you rather live your life not knowing who you are, where you are, what you are, or the power of your mind, and Mm -hmm. being mixed with everybody like that or would you rather know who you are where right. you are and what you are even if it meant that some people would think you're crazy mm. well, obviously I, I would go for the second one i mean yeah. i'd rather i'd rather know myself and know who i am mm -hmm. um i mean uh, there's that quote ignorance is bliss right where i mean a lot of people can live in ignorance and be happy but Ignorance is uh, lazy. Ignorance is lazy. <laughs> yeah, I guess lazy so. Bliss. Yeah, lazy mm. bliss. Yeah. Here, here's the, here's the boy. Here's the thing, guys. You guys were ignorant before you heard of me. I was ignorant too. Don't take it personally. Um, <laughs> you guys, you guys were ignorant to the idea of flat Earth before you you got that phone call or they got that email. Um, mm -hmm. But now you have a choice. You could either look into it or be willfully ignorant. Mm -hmm. Mm. Ah, you've you've cursed us. <laughs> you, cursed us. <laughs> you were you were un you were unknowingly ignorant. Now, yeah. if you don't look into it, you're going to be willfully ignorant. <laughs> that's mm. true. That's true. 
Maybe we shouldn't have had you on originally. <laughs> it's a big mistake. It's like Morpheus with the yeah. red pill and the blue pill. I you gave mm-hmm. you the red yeah. pill, right? And now, <laughs> you know, now you have no choice. Do with what you will. Yeah. Yeah. You can try. Well, if you don't you mind, try- um, I, good. I have just one more. Would you rather? Um, just really quick. I think it's an interesting one. Would you rather um, have the chance to actually go into space and see everything for real? Or would you rather be able to explore every area of Antarctica? Space isn't real, so I can't answer that. Space, space <laughs> well, what, what if you had, like, what if you had a chance veil. to go to go just up, but yeah. higher than? I'd rather anybody. explore Antarctica. I'd okay. rather explore Antarctica. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, what I was thinking too. Antarctica, was, Antarctica yeah. you could probably see what's going on out there. Um, mm-hmm. Versus, you go up high. You know, if I took a flat earther, let's say you could go up to three hundred thousand feet. If you took a flat earther mm-hmm. up there and a glober up there, the flat earther would look down and see the flat earth and a glober would look down there and see a sphere because the way uh, we see is we see in a circle, right? When we look into the distance, we see the same direction in all, the same distance in all directions, right? And so when you lay that down, we see in a circle and then a glober will say, well, I see that curve. That's the curve of the earth. And I'm like, no, no, that's just the curve of the maximum length of your vision. Mm-hmm. Just all perception at that point. Yeah. Like when you look out, okay. you see the same distance in all directions. That's a sweeping circle. And then your brain tells you, oh, that's the, the programming tells you that's the globe. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'd probably go to Antarctica too, honestly. I think that, that one is the, the biggest thing that's tipping me over the edge is why we... Yeah. Why there's just not much information about it. That kind of makes me angry. And why know? is it off so, limits yeah. and so severely yeah, off, off limits? limits? And why do all mm-hmm. of our dignitaries go down there in weird times and stuff, you know? Like, yeah. like um, John, Jim, John Kerry went down on election day two elections ago, right? That was weird. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, so very weird. And the other thing is the North Pole. We have all been trained that that's cold, dark, desolate, and freezing, but there could be a paradise there. That could be where all of this stuff is coming from. Maybe the sun and moon that we see are, are literally projected from the inner earth from there. I don't know. We're not allowed to go there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, okay. I think I would choose to go up just to see it's mm. up, up there. Yeah. And into if, what I think is space. I, but, if, if, I, if I could get past whatever this veil is, I think I'd go up there, but otherwise I'll go Antarctica. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for for choosing to join us tonight. I think that was that was really cool. I think our fans are really going to enjoy mm-hmm. it too. Um, did you have any closing thoughts that you wanted to say, Dave, before before we took off and kind of ended it there? Yeah, belief is the enemy of knowing. You know, you guys, would you guys, you guys know where I live? No. Did I tell you? I don't I'm, think so. No, uh, I don't know. I, I thought I told you I live in Connecticut. My my question is, do I okay. really live? Do I really live in Connecticut? Do you know I live <laughs> in Connecticut? And the answer is, it's easy to believe. You can just go, you know, mm-hmm. drink some beers, take a nap, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. You want to know something? It takes time and effort and critical thought. Mm-hmm. And we're trained not mm-hmm. to think for ourselves. We're trained to memorize and regurgitate. So, belief is the enemy of knowing. You believe you live on a ball, but you don't know why, right? To mm-hmm. know. You have to actually check and once you check you can't unsee it so and 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 yeah. also consensus is not science right just because everybody believes something doesn't make it true so there's millions and millions and millions of people waking up to flat earth and the, the shape of the earth doesn't matter it's the lie that matters and right now this world is going into tyranny you guys are fucked Okay, just so you know, <laughs> right? Your, your freedoms are gone. You're never going to know what we knew growing up. And uh, that's if we allow them to get away with this. But if somehow we're able to get our freedoms back, how long can we hold on to it if we don't know where we are, if our heads are in a prison and that's the globe, right? Mm. And, and other people will be here that know the truth of this world, know that your thoughts create your reality, know that nobody can break your free will. Nobody can break your free will. Nobody can take steel from you. It's not allowed, okay? Mm. And they know this. They know this law, this karmic law. So they only can trick you into giving away your God-given free will. So once you wake up to the flat earth, you literally disconnect from the matrix. 
you guys are familiar with the documentary with Keanu Reeves, The Matrix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? So <laughs> at the beginning, Neo, his soul knows the truth of the world, but his head is trapped in the Matrix. He doesn't know where he is, who he is, what he is. And then he got unplugged from the Matrix. By the end of the movie, he figures out the power of his own mind and he takes back his life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you want to be? The Neo at the beginning of the Matrix or the Neo at the end of the Matrix? <laughs> I think it would you rather I'd be the end. <laughs> yeah. always the end. <laughs> yeah. So again, six years ago, it took a lot of courage to become a flat earther because, yeah. you know, it was insane. But now you mentioned flat earth to somebody they're like, Oh really? What's up with that? You know, except the people that have already lost control of their souls, they're just little demons and there's nothing you can do to help them. So you guys seem intelligent. You guys seem like you have a little bit of courage. You guys seem like you might want a future. So I encourage you to <laughs> not comply, not comply with the bullshit and take back your power. Okay. I can agree with that one. Definitely. Yeah. Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, the Flat Earth Podcast.com, Flat Earth Podcast. Cool. Flat Earth Podcast Instagram. Um, and uh, that's it. So that's where okay. you find me and my YouTube channel. The initials for deep inside the rabbit hole, just D I T R H. Good gotcha. short videos right there. Um, and tell your friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you right. so yeah. much, Dave. Yeah. Thank you. Just want to shout out be sure to follow uh, us on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok at Speak Truly. Be sure to follow Dave on the Flat Earth Podcast Instagram. Um, and then get that that app as well. And then just thank you so much, Dave, for for joining us tonight. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd love to have it. you on maybe in the future about some other theories to talk about because we definitely have some some stuff to touch on too. We live in Nevada, so Area 51 is a big one as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Just do, do aliens come from 25 trillion miles away and crash in Nevada, or do they maybe come from just a couple thousand miles away mm. yeah. and crash in Nevada? All right. Think about it until our next until our next episode. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Cool. See ya. All right. Thank, Thank you, you again. Thanks. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.